Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena episode 41 for Wednesday, April 15th, 2015. Photo and video collage. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com, the online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash arena. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash arena. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. If you take a lot of pictures, shoot a lot of video with your Android device, then it's highly likely that you've set up your Google account to automatically upload that media to Google Photos. It's one of the first things that I do when I get a new device. I set up that sync, and then everything I shoot is automatically backed up on Google's cloud. I love it. Well, one of the perks that you get when you do this is Google's algorithmic attention to taking what it determines to be collections of photos and videos from a particular moment in your life and magically turns them into an auto awesome movie, complete with filters, edits, music, the works. It's actually pretty impressive to find those gifts just kind of waiting for you. And I'm amazed at how well they turn out, mostly. As with any algorithmic approach, there are times when it picks something totally random and out of place uh, in context. But hey, you don't have to do any editing, any curation. All you really had to do was turn on your phone one day and boom, you see it there waiting for you. That got me thinking, Google can't be the only company doing this kind of thing. And I came up with three different approaches to creating video and photo collages that can be easily shared online for your friends and family to see. So let's pit them against each other in this week's Best of the Best. First up is an app that does a good job at automating the creation experience based on its own smarts. Magisto allows you to pick and choose a number of photos and videos to include in your finished video collage. The number of pieces of media that you can bring into your project actually depends on your service level. For free, you can select up to 15 photos and 10 videos to be included in a video that lasts up to one minute and 15 seconds. Paying a monthly or yearly fee actually gives you more options for importing more photos and videos, increasing the length of the created video, and even increasing the quality of the file to HD. The interface of the app is very straightforward and modern. You get a list of the services, most popular movies, but if you wish to create your own, you can just tap the floating plus button. From there, you can scour your on-device gallery as well as any photos and videos stored on your Google Drive. You can also add new media by tapping the camera icon and rolling from there. Once you've picked your crop of media, hit next then select a style that matches what you're going for. For this trip to Disneyland, I chose Happy Birthday since it was my daughter's fifth birthday present. Each of these imparts a different visual style to the finished project. And finally, pick a piece of music to time it all with. Down at the bottom is an option to use your own music as well if you have something in mind. Then just add a title, set your desired length, and tap Make My Movie. The pieces are then uploaded to Magisto's server, which can take a while, but from there, the algorithm does its magic and you'll eventually get a notification to watch the finished product and it'll be saved to your account inside the Magisto app. And the edited video actually turned out pretty great. Magisto knew to pick the very moment we told Lucy she's going to Disneyland, which was impressive, I thought. Magisto imparts a heavy visual influence and even does things like ducking audio clips underneath other clips for an advanced edit feel. Pretty impressive for an algorithm. Magisto is cross-platform and also has a web app, so check that out. Try Magisto for free in the Play Store with a number of subscription options available inside the app. Next up is Animoto Video Maker. The interface of Animoto, I'd say, is a bit less tailored to current standards. Thankfully, the app provides simple instructions for selecting each piece of the video. First, 
you will need to select all the media that you wish to be included in your video. You tap that pencil icon and you'll get a drop down menu of the four sections that need your input. Changing the style provides you with a long list of video styles to pick from, each of them previewable by tapping the play icon below them. Change song for selecting a tune to fit your video and there are a bunch of genres to pick from there. Add photos and videos for picking your video assets. I will note that I had a hard time getting the app to import my video into the project, but I didn't have any of those problems with my photos. Thankfully, Animoto has a web component, and I was able to get those videos in there using my account on the website. Not ideal, but I suppose ultimately it worked. Selecting any piece of media automatically uploads them to Animoto's servers for processing. Finally, add text to drop text blocks into your creation. One big difference here is that Animoto doesn't scour your media for an algorithm approach. It's more of a manual approach. It's up to you to reposition the media in the order you want, as well as decide which parts of a video should be shown. That takes time to do, of course, especially because it lacks any way to automatically sort by creation date or truly randomize placement. Honestly, I found the web component to be a bit more user-friendly than the app, but if you have time to spend creating the pieces of your video, you'll be pretty happy with the final product here. Things are a bit less whiz-bang and more straightforward, like a slideshow with a few visual splashes to keep things interesting. Animoto has a free component that gives you 30 second video capability, or you can pay $5 per month or $30 per year for more expensive options like a broader selection of styles and longer output video. Check out Animoto for free to start in the Play Store. And finally, let's talk about HTC. Yeah, the phone maker. Back in 2013, HTC released the One M7 phone, and with it came a new feature called Zoe's that had everyone talking. Over the past few years, a Zoe has evolved from an animated GIF-styled block of video that resides in your gallery on HTC devices to what it is now. The app called Zoe, now found in the Play Store, is compatible with more than just HTC devices, though I wasn't allowed to install it on my Nexus 7, so your mileage may vary. But Zoe is HTC's way of making a shareable video collage of clips that you select from your gallery. Now, you only get 16 clips in total, filling up to 33 seconds at the most, so you're forced to be selective. Personally, I found 16 to be too little for what I wanted to create. When it comes to the video files you choose for Zoe, each clip is played from the very beginning and for a short amount of time. So HTC isn't applying an algorithm and scanning for perfect moments, and I found the final videos seem to be a bit less focused as a result. When you have your clips, tap through, and you'll get an instant preview of Zoe's work. You can then change up the theme for a different look and feel, and those changes are done quickly because they're done on the device. It's processed locally and not uploaded to the server for processing. Select one of Zoe's music choices, or you can pick your own music on the device. And that randomize button is very useful for reorganizing the order of your clips on the fly. And every step of the way, you get an instant preview of the changes. Tap done and then you'll choose who to share it with and what services to blast with your creation. By enabling this remix option, you're giving others the ability to expand upon your video with their own clips. Your video will then upload to Zoe servers and be displayed on your profile for your friends to see. Zoe is good for creating short videos of particular moments as opposed to, for example, packaging up all of your media from a trip into a concise video. Find out if it's compatible for your device by searching for Zoe in the Play Store for free. So with this week's Best of the Best, I'm going to answer two questions. First, which of these is better than the others? And I have to say it was pretty easy this time around. HTC Zoe has a nice polish, but... The clip and time constraints, as well as device incompatibility, I think kind of hurt it in the long run. Maybe they'll improve that over time. Animoto has a strong web offering, but the app just didn't work as expected. I had definite problems with importing video. Not to mention it required a lot more personal curation and setup. It's not bad for control freaks or if you have a lot of time in your hands, but it's not as easy as the others. So the winner this week is undeniably, in my opinion, Magisto. I really appreciate 
the algorithmic approach because it does the work for me and I can get back to my busy life. Not to mention, I was surprised to find a bonus movie made by Magisto this morning when I turned on my phone. It picked a day from last November when I took my kids to this really cool children's museum and it made a great video collage out of it without me triggering anything. Awesome stuff. Okay, so the second question to tackle here is, does Magisto stack up to Google's Auto Awesome? I guess that's a bit of a toss-up. Magisto creates videos with a bit more stylistic elements, though some might consider these touches to be a bit on the cheesy side of things. And there's a limit to how much uh, is included inside the video with subscription levels for gaining access to more clips and more time if you want, which means there's a recurring cost if you want the best that Magisto offers. Google, well, you get surprise auto awesome movies appearing on your account regularly. You can actually tag and create your own magically constructed videos from inside the Photos app on Android. So you can trigger a movie whenever you want. And the algorithm for picking moments always impresses me. I don't know. Both are great. Both create high quality videos. In my opinion, the no friction, no cost approach of Google's auto awesome, uh, unsurprisingly, uh, wins here. And lucky you, it's probably already installed on your Android device anyways. So if you didn't know, you could trigger these manually. Go check it out for yourself. All right, before we move on, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode. That's lynda.com. lynda.com is for problem solvers, for the curious, for people who want to make things happen. Maybe you want to develop an Android app, publish an ebook, master Excel, or sharpen your HTML skills. lynda.com has everything you need to feed your curious mind. If you're ready to start taking better photos, you can check out lynda.com's Foundations of Photography and Photography 101 series. Perfect for the apps featured in this week's episode. There's tutorials covering basics like composition, exposure, and more. They also have a weekly series called Creative Quick Tips where Justin Seeley guides you through a five-minute self-contained tutorial that you can use to instantly improve your design workflow in Photoshop or Illustrator, WordPress, and more. I've watched courses personally on soundproofing my studio, working with audio software that I love, uh, video editing software here at Twit, uh, interviews with awesome mixing engineers like Larry Crane, one of my personal heroes. With a lynda.com membership, you can watch and learn from top experts. They're all passionate about teaching. Uh, you can stream thousands of video courses on demand. You can learn on your own schedule, learn at your own pace. It's perfect for that. Courses are structured so that you can watch from start to finish, or you can you know, consume those in bite-sized pieces. Browse each course transcript to follow along on your own, or you can search for an answer and skip right to that point inside the video. Take notes as you go, refer to those later. You can download tutorials and watch them on the go, including access on your Android or iOS device. You can create and save playlists of courses that you want to watch to customize your learning path or share with friends, colleagues, team members, your lynda.com membership gives you unlimited access to training on hundreds of topics, all for one flat rate. Whether you're looking to become an expert, you're passionate about a hobby, or you just want to learn something new, I want you to check out lynda.com slash arena and sign up for your free 10-day trial. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash arena. And we thank them for their support of Android App Arena and the Twit Network. And, uh, you know, when you support Twit sponsors, you're supporting Twit, so thank you too. And now let's take a look at a photo app that adds a layer of depth and motion to your pictures. It's this week's big app. Today's big app accomplishes the strange task of merging two key components of today's theme, video and photos. In essence, Fuse is a way to create photos that react like video when you move your device in a specific direction. It's kind of hard to explain, but let's take a look at the process and you'll understand what I mean. You tap the camera to bring up the camera interface. For starters, there are a few different ways you can capture a fuse. Pull out that slider to the right to see a few of those examples and you can select one if you like. Doing that will bring up the guide on the camera interface showing you how to move your device based on the capture approach. But it's really not necessary. All you have to do is press and hold the red spot below. And now, move the device around an object, or even yourself, in any direction, up, down, left, right, and when you release, it's done. What you're doing essentially is capturing a number of images from a shifting perspective, bringing dimension and context into that image. Once you like what you've shot, hit this button at the bottom and you can trim the edges of your fuse to clean it up. 
Tap next and add a description as well as determine how visible you want it to be and then share. That fuse will be added to your profile and if you set it to go public, other users will be able to see it and comment on it as well. Tagging your Fuse will help with discovery, so don't forget that part. Fuse has its own social component, and it appears to be a pretty active service with Android and iOS users pitching in. There's even this Fuse of opposing Spike Lee, so it has celeb cred. And it really brings the viewer into your photo in a way that passively looking at a picture doesn't do. For something new, check out Fuse for yourself in the Play Store for free. I've seen some people comparing Fuse, and that's spelled F-Y-U-S-E, by the way. It's not F-U-S-E. It's F-Y-U-S-E. Uh, comparing Fuse to Photospheres, and I can kind of see the similarity. The big difference here is that Fuse locks you into one plane of motion, where Photosphere really gives you the entire 360-degree treatment. It's really easy to get started with Fuse. It's pretty much just move the phone in that direction. Photospheres can get super complicated. So pretty cool stuff. You should definitely check it out. Um, as I say every week, I love hearing from you guys. Your input is super valuable to me. So please send your favorite apps, new categories, whatever you have to arena at twit.tv. Let me know what I'm going to do an episode on next week. Hey, there's a task for you. Arena at twit.tv. There's also a subreddit for the show. I post categories there from time to time and ask you to tell me about your favorite apps, why you love them so much. If you have input on some apps and you want to head over there, uh, check it out at androidapparena.reddit.com and you can share them with me and other fans of the show. You can also follow me on Google+. Plus. I sometimes talk about Android, sometimes don't, but I'm definitely there. Search for Jason Howell. I host a live viewing party of each week's episode where I'll be on set to answer any questions you might have about the apps featured in this show and anything beyond that Android related. That happens every Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Pacific following Tech News Tonight at live.twit.tv. And of course, if you miss the live taping, don't worry about it. Every week, the episode will appear later that evening on the site and in the feeds. And all those details can always be found at our show page. The one URL you should remember, it's twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me once again today. My name is Jason Howell, and I will see you next week in the arena.